I'm hearing about divine femininity. It's hard enough to define what femininity is, let alone what even is divine femininity? So let's talk about what I see when I look up what divine femininity is. This one says, the feminine aspect of the divine power that connects and binds the earth. And this one says, it's the energy within and without that's softer, nurturing, intuitive, empowered. It's similar to yin or shakti. This one's a little bit different. It says that the divine feminine forces others to see themselves. She is the oracle that the divine masculine turns to when he needs to be led. She's the catalyst of change. And this one says that she's the paradigm of universal motherhood. And this one says that she's a non-denominational concept of self-exploration that brings balance. I wanted to show you what you find when you look up online because it's varied and different. And so of course, it's something that's hard to define and everybody's gonna define it differently at this point. So for us to understand what it is, First, we have to know, what does it mean when we say divine? So a quick lookup says, of, from, or like God or a God, excellent or delightful. The more I look at this, I notice this divine godlike, which means to me, adherence to a higher purpose, a divine purpose. And so what I see, the more I look into this and the way that the divine feminine is talked about, it's more about inner processes that have the side effect of behaviors outwardly. So when we talked about femininity in a previous show, you can go back and watch it, I'll tag it at the end. We, we looked at the way in which somebody who is feminine relates to somebody else. To be divine means to do inner processes which changes the way you relate to someone else. Now there are four processes that seem to come up a lot when we do inner work that has a relation to how we relate to others and how we relate to the world. For the divine feminine, the first one is intuition. So what's intuition? The power or faculty of attaining to direct knowledge or cognition without evident rational thought and interference, its immediate apprehension or cognition, its knowledge or conviction gained by intuition, or just quick and ready insight. Okay, so this is where we see often that insight and intuition are conflated with each other. A way to understand the difference is that insight, the word sight is in there, insight is seeing, and intuition to, to it is to know. So with insight, it's having really developed pattern recognition. So it's being able to take in information, see patterns through experience, and to know how to navigate those to be able to make generalizations, to see the pattern of something, and to be insightful about it. For intuition, that's more of gut instinct. So when we say instinctual, it's a way of just having a cognition about something and really having a firm belief whether it's good or it's bad. It's a knowing. Because we're using the term intuition with divine, we have to think about this divine purpose and the spiritual components of intuition. So some people will say intuition is the voice of God or the Holy Spirit or connection to the higher self. But really, a lot of it is, is just connecting to something be it internal or be it a higher power that gives you information. 
it taps into your reasoning without using your reasoning and it doesn't require any type of external validation. Now, as we talked about, the behaviors in which a way a person relates to the world is how to see what inner work has been done. So if somebody says to you, I'm a divine feminine, you have to listen to my intuition, that's not necessarily how it would work. If we see someone who has really good intuition that we can trust, then that may lend credence to the inner work they've done and their ability to be in their divine femininity. Okay, so what if I want to really tap into my divine femininity? How do I establish something or create something that seems to be instinctual? Well, the first thing is to understand that we all have intuition. We all have instincts and it can be developed just like anything else. It's a, it's a wisdom that we get that starts with self-reliance. So when we look back at the things we've done and the decisions that we've made, are we able to trust ourselves and have that good self-reliance? See, if we start building our facets of trust within ourselves and behaving in a way that we can have dignity in and learn to trust the decisions that we make, then that pause between a choice or something we're presented with and our decision in how to encounter it gets smaller and smaller to the point of becoming instinctual. You can get feedback to hone those decisions as you go. But I think you can also start to try to listen to your, your intuition. Start listening to your first mind, your gut instinct, and say, would it hurt anything if I went with what I just thought? And then start seeing if it works out. Now you might notice that I'm using the word person instead of saying woman or female. And there's a reason for that. When we look at Carl Jung, which we've studied before, he had archetypes or unconscious understandings of different things in the world. So for instance, he says, we all have a basic understanding of the word woman. We all have a basic understanding of the word feminine. We have specific archetypes, which is like the base model for how we understand something. And what Jung said is that inside of us, we all have our masculine side and our feminine side. And no matter how we present outwardly or what archetype we choose to portray outwardly, we have to get in touch with both sides internally. So if we're talking about divine femininity, this is something that men would need to get in touch with, but also women. So what are some examples of intuition? A lot of times we think of it as like a sense of unease, or sort of like you're walking down the street and you just have an intuition that you need to turn and go the other way because there might be danger lurking ahead. Or when you're at a party and you just feel like the vibe has changed and it's time to go. But it can also be about having a conversation with somebody and just feeling that the energy has changed or you almost know exactly how their story is going to end or you're making a business decision and you just have a better feeling about one thing versus the other. What do we think? Do we think that intuition or divine intuition is the foremost quality or at least one of the four major domains of divine femininity? Let me know in the comments. If you haven't subscribed yet, it is free, please do so. Please like this video, it helps me to put out more and share the information to others where you think it might be important. Coming up will be part two of Divine Femininity with the next domain. Thanks guys.